I'm really ready to get started. I'm double secret ready to get started. Is my camera working? <laughs> Thank goodness. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like I'm on. So I'm going to just say that I'm on. Hey, everybody, welcome. It's Mike Myers with the Monday edition of the Mike Myers Ask Mike Anything live stream. The goal of this live stream is to provide those of us who are isolated by the coronavirus an opportunity to continue our studies. We concentrate here on A+, Net+, and Security+, but we're certainly more than comfortable with lots of other CompTIA certifications as well as other IT certifications as well. So, welcome aboard. So basically, this is a live stream. So we start here at 2 o'clock. This is uh, Central Daylight Time in Houston, Texas. And we will go till 3 o'clock. That's a one hour, so this is a one hour show. And the goal here is that you ask me questions by typing them into the chat window, and then I answer them. So while we're talking about that chat window, let's take a quick look together. Number one, at the very top of the chat window here in YouTube where it says top chat, go ahead and hit that pull down and set it to live chat. That gets the algorithm out of the way. And also make sure that there's a timestamp that is up and showing so you can, uh, you, we'll see that that can be handy in just a little bit. Anyway, so uh, understood that that's how this works. You ask me questions and then I answer them. Now, if I can't answer them, I've been known to defer questions. Uh, if I miss a question, just ask again. Do keep in mind, I got my buddies Dave Rush and Andrew Hutz in the background doing a great job making sure that we get all your questions covered. In fact, they will answer a lot of questions for me automatically, which I always appreciate as well. So it's never a problem. Uh, what does my shirt say? Somebody asked. Okay. Today, my shirt says, these are difficult times. <laughs> I like this shirt. I think I've had it on here before, but you know what? It just keeps getting funnier. Anyway, I know that some of you folks are not the type who like to ask questions in a live chat, so that's no big deal. All you have to do is send me an email. My email address is michaelm at totalsim.com. And uh, if you're a gamer, I'm Senior Pepe on Steam, and I'm Des Weds at just about anything else. So if you feel like sending me a more involved question, whatever, just send it to my email, michaelm at totalsim.com, and I will be more than glad to answer those for you. Not a problem at all. All right, so do we have a quorum yet, Dave? Doesn't look quite quorum-y. Uh, da 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 so anytime you see me looking to the right here, it's because I'm looking uh, for questions in, in the chat window. Um, all right, so uh, let's go through here. Just scrolling along, let's see who's here. Tolwitz here, Jared, Jared Graham, good to see you, man. Will Shaw is here, of course. <laughs> yeah, Will, I can't even find an RTX, find an RTX 30 anything these days. I, you know, I guess I can find if I want to spend $3,000 or something like that, but I still am having a lot of trouble finding them, and I don't pay Dave Rush any money at all, so uh, paycheck. I told him I'd give him a big celery. How old is that joke? Catherine Morgan, wow, so generous. Alan Dugan's here. Patricia Grace, good to see you uh, for Rayman. This is like old home week here. I love this. Uh, Brian Cannon, Chaco Taco, man, we had everybody. Mohammed's here, great, great, great. Johnny Five, Johnny Five is new. Or if you've been here before, Johnny Five, I don't recall you, but welcome aboard. TD Washington, Chris Kent, Mr. DeBito, DeBito? Tomo Abrito, Mr. DeBito, Tomo Tomo. Raul Diaz, Chaco Taco, 6-4 is not a difficult time. 13-8, yes. It is for me. Chaco Taco, I'm not a musician. I'm a percussionist, and I have to play with these. And trust me, this is not an easy beat for me to carry. But, you know. Ah, da -da -da -da. All right, so... Uh, All right, let's go ahead and uh, dive into a couple of questions. I've scrolled all the way down to 203, Richard James. Hello, I had an interview today, and the interviewer said that people are becoming more tech savvy and so aren't using support as much anymore. What do you make of this, please? I make that person's an idiot. Uh, I have spent the last 40 years of people telling me that 
We don't need PC technicians, computers, self-configuring, paperless offices. The internet's going to change it all. But And you know what? We need more techs now than ever. More than ever. Uh, are people more tech savvy? I don't even think people are tech savvy. I will say that in general, people are better at applications. Whereas we used to have to like formally teach people how to use Microsoft Word or, you know, some uh, whatever Outlook, uh, even online tools, you know, like Google Mail, which can be a little bit complicated sometimes. I see more people who can do applications. So we've got more drivers on the road, but we have less people than ever who actually understand uh, like to add RAM. It's a, I don't know if you've ever seen it. There's a television show. There was a television show called Big Bang Theory. And uh, in the Big Bang Theory, there's this one scene where the, all the, it's all a bunch of nerds. And the nerds are driving in a car and all of a sudden the car breaks down. And they all start asking each other, like, well, does anybody understand how an internal combustion engine works? And everybody's like, oh, yes, of course, I understand how it works. And then the next question was, is, can anybody in here actually fix a motor? And the answer, well, I don't have any clue. So that's pretty much what it is. I don't feel that people are more tech savvy. I think people are more application savvy. I think people are a little bit better at basic personal security than ever before. But I would say there's probably less people who know how to add RAM to a computer today than there ever was. In fact, if you want to go so far as to say there are less people per capita who know how to install RAM than ever before, then I would certainly guarantee you that's absolutely true. So if your interviewer wants to say that everybody's tech savvy and doesn't need it, then my next, you can't say this to him, but my next question is, is then why are you talking to me? So. Chaco Taco, can you talk about how split horizons, how split horizons work? Uh, I think I can. Uh, okay. So uh, split horizons is a proxy thing, all right? And uh, so what takes place? It's a VPN thing, sorry. Ah, can I? The trick is, is can I do this just through hand gestures? All right, so if you've got a VPN, let's say you have a VPN to your office. And so you dial in on your VPN, dial in. So you, you use the, you make a connection to the internet. You're sitting in an airport, okay? Uh, and you're, you're in Denver, Colorado, and you're sitting in an airport, and you want to connect into your office. So uh, you, you, you're connected to the internet in the airport, all right? But then you have to make a VPN connection back to the office. And that way you can access shared stuff at the office or whatever you want. Pretty common thing to do. There's a problem here. With earlier VPNs, you, when you connected to the office, now you're already on the internet. Do you understand that? But now you, you're on the internet, but now you light up your VPN. So that VPN is going to use your internet connection to go back to the office. For most VPN solutions, they thought that your connection to the office was your connection to the internet. Now you understand, you're sitting in an airport in Denver, okay? And you can't, so you're already on the internet. So the, uh, oh, I always get nervous when people start typing. Oh, they're okay. Uh, so you're already on the internet, but once, you're on the internet, but once you light up the VPN, the VPN kind of takes over your internet connection. Here's the problem, you ready? If you open up a web browser and you're sitting in that airport in Denver, that browser is going to go back to the office. It's going to go back to your office. It's going to use whatever your office's default gateway is. It's going to use whatever your office's DNS server is and all that, and then go back out to the internet, get your stuff, brings it back to the office, and then sends it through that VPN link back to your laptop sitting there in Denver, Colorado. That's not good. So most VPNs today have a, uh, a split horizon function that basically goes, look, my IP address in the office is going to be 192.168.55 something. But I have an internet connection, and here at the airport, my internet connection is, you know, 10.5.5.42, whatever it is. And with the right kind of VPN uh, client software, they'll sit there and go, oh, here's one connection where he's trying to open up uh, uh, the Explorer 
to go look at files on the network, on the local network, that we're going to run through the VPN because that's the 192, 168, whatever network. However, if you're sitting on that same laptop in Denver and you just open up a web browser, you open up Firefox, a good VPN is going to go, wait, 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 wait. Don't send this all the way to the v, through the VPN to back home. Just connect and do it. And that's what we call split horizon. Hello, Landry, good to see you. Wilson, good to see you too. All right, I say we get a pretty good crowd. So guys, I do need to warn you about, well not warn you, let you, I, I'm here to inform you of things. Big thing is last Wednesday, I made this big announcement saying something huge is to be announced. There is something huge, but I am not legally, but morally, I cannot make the announcement. And I thought I could make the announcement today. I thought I had checked everywhere. And guys, I was a little premature in my understanding of what I could get away with. And the other parties are like, Mike, can you wait 30 days? Which for me is like 5 million years. So I know I've been making this big noise, everybody, about how exciting it is that we're going to be this big announcement and I've got to leave you hanging. I am so sorry. I did not want to do this. But I mean, I just happened to be talking to this other person and they're like, oh, no, no, you can't. Please don't say anything. And I was like, all right, I won't say anything. We'll tell you a couple of things though. Ready? So you're going to be looking at this, this, all of this for not too terribly much longer. Hopefully within about 30 days, uh, the Mike Myers AMA is going to transform into something newer and bigger. In fact, I guarantee you over the next year, we're going to be, we're going to be scaling this up and I'm going to be really counting, especially on a lot of you old geezers who show up a lot. Uh, you never know who might end up with a plane ticket to Houston, Texas, or uh, at the very least, some type of connectivity. So we're definitely uh, going to be scaling things up dramatically. Uh, it's probably not going to be one thing. In fact, probably I'm so busy on the A-plus book right now that uh, it's probably not going to be for a little bit. But that is one thing I can share with you, which is just a part of this much bigger announcement. But it, I felt so bad because I made such a big deal out of announcing all this stuff and then I can't say anything, so saw we. I promise that I will not make any big anticipating noises until I absolutely positively know I can make an announcement. But it's big. Uh, Marius 9T, premature annunciation. Oh, I knew somebody was going to say that. I knew somebody was going to say that. I know. All right. Well, now what do you do on a downer like that, huh? Well, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to just keep on keeping on. Um, Hold on, guys. <laughs> All right. Tolowit. Total Seminars is building up the studio. People are going to be working hard, Tolowit, to help me expand this concept out a little bit more. There's been a lot of things I've wanted to do, and because of bandwidth, it's been a little bit tricky. And uh, like, I really want to develop a lot more about getting work and stuff like that. And they've just got me bouncing around so much that it's a little tough for me to do that. So I really want to start developing, for example, okay, why aren't you working? I got a backlog of emails from folks who've been asking me that over a week ago and I still haven't even got to them. Uh, 
I want to do more about technology uh, and unboxing. I want to see more of that going on. Uh, and just a bigger and just raise the uh, overall production value a little bit. This is fine, but you know, I think, I, well, we absolutely can do better. But the thing is, is that this has really been a coronavirus based live stream. It was made for the same reason Zoom suddenly came out of nowhere, is we nobody could get together. Now, as that starts to fade out, I don't know how the corona, the corona uh, how it's doing in, in your neck of the world, but like here in Houston, Texas, it's all but gone. And I'm hopeful that that's your uh, way all over the world. I know it's not, but uh, you know, it, it really, the, the, the concept of this being uh, an AMA because of people who are isolated by the coronavirus has been great, but it's time for us to move and evolve into something bigger and more exciting. And uh, whether that happens in one big night, which I doubt it's probably gonna be nickel and diming as we build stuff up, uh, or, or over the course of the years, begin to develop and broaden the, 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 the topic ranges and the production value, can't tell you yet, uh, but uh, that, that will be one thing that's happening. T.D. Washington, I thought you were going to announce that you had won the lottery and you were giving away trips to your new island because you love us so much. Oh, man. You know, the problem is, honestly, I, it's really hard for me to give away physical prizes because I love doing that. I think it's great. I mean, if my entire audience was in the United States and Canada and probably Mexico, too, giving away things is pretty easy because... You can do it, but once you go overseas, and even places like the UK, which you would think would be easy to do, are surprisingly difficult to get a piece of equipment to anybody. Uh, so that's a little bit frustrating. And then heaven forbid, you're in a place like, I don't know, some bizarre third world country like Poland, you know. You, Poland is in Europe. Why, why is it so hard to get stuff to Poland? It's craziness. I mean, I understand right now with the Ukraine and all that, I don't want to get into that, but I mean, even in normal times, getting, having prizes for equipment, I'd love to give away some RTX uh, uh, cards. It's just, well, that's particularly hard because it's hard for me to, I can't get a hold of the cards. But that's always going to be a trick. Or even like having somebody fly in, you would think, how big of a deal is it? Let's just say, uh, Tolwitz a bad example because he's American. Who's, who's not American on here I could quickly pick on. Uh, I, Will Shaw, I forget where you're at, but I'm going to pretend like you're from the UK, Will. And if you're not, I apologize for getting that wrong. Anyway, so somebody like, Will, what if I wanted to fly him, get him some tickets? How hard can it be to get some people a couple of tickets? It's ridiculously hard. <sighs> Guys, I don't need to be political, but... Uh, my libertarian blood starts to boil sometimes when I've got somebody who's, I do want to do a contest and I want to give them something and way too many jumps for something like that. I'm going to get off my, I'm going to get off my, uh, I'm going to get, get off my high horse here and uh, just take it easy. So I do have uh, some, a little bit disappointing news and I'm just going to put, bring this up right now to let everybody know. Uh, we're not going to be giving away a CompTIA voucher today. Uh, CompTIA has contacted us. They've got a couple of issues. Uh, I am working with CompTIA and it's, I am hopeful that we'll have this all ironed out. But until said otherwise, folks, we will not be giving away CompTIA vouchers. Now, now don't worry about that. We're still going to be giving away practice questions and massive discounts for bundles and all that stuff. It's all still going to be here for you. But uh, CompTIA has, uh, we're, we're working on it. We'll, hopefully we'll get them back to a position of right think. We love those people at CompTIA, and uh, Dave, Dave, what's wrong with unboxing? I love unboxing stuff. Uh, Will Shaw, you're from Indiana. So Will, where are you from in Indiana? I used to live in Holland, Indiana, way down south. All right. Oh, anyway, guys, so, uh, Super Omar 64, good to see you, man. Good luck to you. <laughs> I need a giveaway with PC case screws and jumpers. Will Shaw, that I've got. I got big bags of them. In fact, I think I got them right around here. Nope. Dave Rush has come in here. He's tidied up, but I can't find anything. All right. All right. So, anyway. 
Do, 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 do. So let's go ahead and start off with a giveaway right now. What do you guys say, huh? Um, so what we're going to do right now, folks, is we're going to we're going to have a giveaway. This giveaway is for 90 day access to the total seminars, practice questions of your choice. Keep in mind, we call these the total tester here in house at total seminars. And uh, we have lots and lots and lots of different CompTIA and even outside of CompTIA uh, uh, total testers. So uh, let's go ahead and give one away. Now folks, uh, we're gonna do a contest right now and I'm gonna show you a multiple choice question and it's gonna, sh and whoever answers it first to my satisfaction on the chat window, you just type in, type your answer to the chat window is gonna win 90 day access to the practice questions of your choice, okay? Uh, so if you want A plus, da, 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 this is great. Let me stress a couple of things to you. Number one, as hard as I try to make this test, this competition fair, things happen, all right? So don't get in a big panic if I suddenly tell you, you know, you think you're first, but you know, just because you think you're first, that doesn't mean you are. We see different things on these screens. Uh, and so let's go ahead and do this. Dear Dave, meet bus, jump under. Diffie Hellman. Okay. <coughs> oh, Will Shaw, that's right. I, Will, I forgot you were a pilot, man. I apologize, dude. I'm so bad at this. Give us an ASMR preview. Brian, I'm not even going to ask, man. I know what ASMR is, all right? Anyway, so we're going to have a competition here. So, guys, I need you to get ready. Also, keep in mind, this is a multiple choice test. Do not type A, B, C, D. You actually need to write out enough of the answer that I understand what you're saying, okay? So if you just type A or C, I ignore it, all right? There, we got all the rules in here. All right, let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to do this practice question is going to be, uh, this is going to be from uh, A+. Plus. So uh, this is a CompTIA A+. Plus. And let's go ahead and get started. A user calls the help desk and states that they are receiving an IP conflict error on their computer. The user is on a company network that uses DHCP. The technician verifies the PC is using DHCP. Which of the following commands should the help desk technician use to resolve this issue? Select two. All right. This is a classic A plus type question, folks. So I'm going to give everybody a moment here. Just because a bunch of people have typed in an answer, that doesn't mean that you still can't be first, folks. Trust me, we've learned this the hard way. I'm giving everybody a moment. All right, looks like we've got a pretty good group. All right, so uh, first of all, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the answer is release, renew. So this is the actual uh, total tester product right here. So let's check our answer. A and E is correct. IP config renew, IP config release. All right, so the answer is IP config slash renew, IP config, well actually it'd be IP config release, then renew, but there's no order to whatever you answer. Anything you say is okay in terms of order. All right, so I want to talk about this because a lot of people really get in trouble with uh, DHCP uh, release renew functions. Generally, the rule is if you know you're talking to the right DHCP server, then you only have to type uh, uh, IP config slash renew. If you feel you're going to a new DHCP server, you always do release renew. Most people just don't even care about that subtle difference. They just always do a release, renew, because it won't hurt otherwise. So release, renew is the right answer. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can find ourselves a winner. I'm going to count on my buddies Dave Rush and Andrew Hutz to potentially help me find out who won, because I haven't been paying attention to that part of the screen. I've been, oh, we got... Lafayette, Indiana. He's a boilermaker.
So we're looking for an answer. In fact, uh, Dave Rush said one. Yeah, Dave, the problem, yeah, Dave, the problem is the person you picked, I'm talking to Dave Rush. Dave Rush, the person you picked only answered one. They didn't answer two. It's the only problem. All right. Bear with us, the judges are talking about who our winner is today. So we're just double checking. Everybody sees different screens here, so, okay. All right, so anyway, we do have a winner, and the winner is, is going to be Alec Briggs. Alec Briggs, congratulations to you, sir. You have won 90-day access to the practice questions of your choice, courtesy of Total Seminars. Now, Alec, in order to claim this prize, you've got to jump through a couple of small hoops, not that big. So in particular, Alec, here's what you're going to have to do. Alec, you need to send an email to DaveR at TotalSem.com. Alec, in this email, be sure to put your YouTube name in the body of the email. Put your email address and then let us know which practice exam you want, and uh, we will actually send you back. Uh, your, your email is your actual login name, and then we'll send you a password, which you can change and do anything you want. Alec, do keep in mind that all this instruction is also being put into the chat window itself, so don't panic if you're uh, not getting it there. All right, so congratulations to you, Alec. Well done. Uh... Lafayette, Indiana. Boy, I've been to Lafayette, Indiana a couple of times. You for Ray, man. You were in Florida and didn't stop and say hello to me? Come on, man. Come on. Will Shaw. So, guys, keep in mind on IP config, the flush. DNS is only to clear the DNS cache. And yeah, yeah Gibson, I'm, I'm afraid that uh, we do not have a uh, voucher giveaway today. Uh, CompTIA has uh, had a couple of issues and we're working on it and hopefully we'll be back and running soon. But up until I say otherwise, neither, neither Dave or myself will be giving away vouchers which is disappointing, but oh well. Uh, Kiomar Perez at uh, 228. Mike, can you specify a different group other than the current user group when you are modifying permissions using the chmod command? Oh my goodness. Uh, no, you cannot, you cannot change I'm not aware of a way to change your group using Chmod. There's a, oh, where's my Linux people when I need them? There is actually a command exactly for this in, uh, I, I, uh, I can't remember the Linux command to change groups. It's something like change group or something like that. Uh, do a quick Google search on Linux, Terminal command change group and it'll come right up for you. But I'm not aware of a way to do it. Oh, actually it is. Somebody, Dave Rush tells me it's C-H-G-R-O-U-P. Change group is how you go about doing that. And then you change the permissions in Chmod. Whew. Uh, Gary Barnhart, we have a message for you. Gary Barnhart, the pearl is in the river. I'm kidding. Gary, uh, you, won, you won last Wednesday, but you haven't sent Dave Rush an email, so we don't know what's going on, man. So send Dave an email for your win. Chone, yeah, that was it. Patricia. I, Patricia, I was thinking Chone also at first. Now, that, unfortunately, that's inaccurate. So guys, a couple of things. Uh, Number one, I want to make mention to you is that we have a Discord channel. Let me rephrase that. 
We don't have a Discord channel. Somebody else has a Discord channel. I have no control over it. I can't decide who's on or not on. I have, it's, in fact, it's called the my, unofficial Mike Myers Discord group or something like that. Anyway, uh, guys, do check out, uh, Dave Rush is gonna put a link online uh, as an invitation for you guys. This Discord channel is really starting to take off and uh, I very much invite you to join in. Man, I've got to tell you, especially if you, have a, if you have a more complicated question, one that's, the problem with the AMA is that really all you can do is type something into a chat window and then I can answer it, right? But with the Discord channel, we can really have two-way communication. And the other nice part is, is that there's a lot of very good techs who show up in that Discord channel uh, every, every usually about uh, 30 minutes after a show ends, you'll see a number of people get on and they're actually getting on with their cameras and their headsets. Um, and uh, it, they're, they're a great group of, of folks. And I, I would say the vast majority of them are better technicians than me. I can talk, but it doesn't make me a great technician. Uh, I'm okay. <coughs> Brian, are you, is that a joke? Is Discord like IRC? Yeah. Super Omar, unofficial Total Seminars Discord channel. Okay. Which in-demand technical skills do most techs have the most difficult time learning? Now, this is from Vegas Brent just a moment ago. with the challenging skills. I would say probably the more challenging skills, now you, if you, you really wanna stick like with CompTIA, I think one of the harder things for people to learn is their troubleshooting processes. Uh, A plus and Net plus have troubleshooting uh, processes, six or seven steps, and I don't find them intuitive. I don't know where CompTIA got these. I think they invented them themselves. I'm not disagreeing with them, but if something that's non-intuitive to me is often difficult for me to understand because I don't know where they're going with it. Uh, that's the stuff I tend to run into. People think like memorizing port numbers or OSI model or you know different numbers of sockets for DDR RAM is an issue, but I think most people are pretty good on, on the few times where there is rote memorization. It's usually the soft skills kind of things that get techs in trouble because, well, that doesn't make sense. All right, so the other thing I wanna make sure you guys understand is that we have, just because you're nice enough to show up here today, we offer a 50% discount on combined, you gotta get both, if you, you get like an ebook and practice questions. As I've been telling everybody for decades now, in order to pass any form of IT certification, you need some kind of instruction, that could be an instructor-led training, videos work good. Number two, you need reference, that's gonna be a book, and number three, you need practice questions. Those are the three things everybody needs. Can you do it with less? I guess. Can you win in a game of golf with only three clubs? I guess, but why would you do that? Because um, I can only afford three clubs. Yeah, I've heard that one too. <clears throat> but anyway, um, so to help you guys out, look, I've already got the cheapest books and the cheapest practice questions of the good ones out there today. But if you go ahead and combine, you ready? An ebook, like let's say you're you're going for your network plus. If you you get an ebook from me, and you combine it with the total tester network plus questions, I'm going to give you half off. Half off. It's already a ridiculous price. Now it's just our prices are insane. Anyway, to take advantage of that deal, all you got to do is head over to my website www.totalsem t o t a l s e m dot com. Head over to the merchant area. Pick. Uh, Network Plus uh, ebook, pick a Network Plus uh, Total Tester or Security Plus, whatever you want. It's all there for you. And uh, just before you uh, total it up, uh, put in the discount code. What is the discount code today, Dave? The code is Titanic. Because <laughs> we're hitting icebergs. I'm not sure. Dave Rush probably has a good reason. Maybe the Titanic sunk this week or something. Anyway, uh, please take advantage of this deal. It's just, it's, it's a ridiculously good deal. And, you know, it's, it's almost as though Mike is there with you. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. But, uh, you know, 
The problem is it's fairly easy to get videos of me uh, going through lots of our many, many partners, uh, you know, Linda, uh, Udemy, uh, Next, there's so many of them. But a lot of times getting a good deal, especially on a book, is uh, something we're very proud of and something we'll keep going as long as I have any power to say otherwise. But uh, it is a great deal. Please take advantage of that. Uh, in aver on average, how long does it take to take Security Plus? Practice. I don't have a super hard number for Security Plus like I do with, say, A Plus and Net Plus, but I'm going to speculate and I'm going to say about 120 hours. And that would be for somebody who has Network Plus knowledge. You know what? I'll backpedal on that. And Guys, I'm going to change my mind on this later, but I would say if you are a good Network Plus technician, you have that level of skill, 80 hours. I would say 80 hours of study time. Assuming you have study material, good, good video, and practice questions. So that's a pretty good guesstimation there, but that's all it is is a guess. I might want to push it. I would say if you don't have Network Plus experience, You'd be around 120, maybe 140. Yeah, so I'm sticking with that. Joe Almora passed the 1001 last week. Well done. Big round of applause to you, Joe. I'd like to see that. All right, guys. Uh, Jason Primavera, you, you just passed Pen Test Plus? Oh, man. I'd like to know more about that. Uh, Tyree Kalal. <laughs> Tyreek Lal. For the, this is at 2.35 p.m. For the A-plus test, I know for a switch it is done by MAC address. And the router uses IP addresses. Is there any other information I should know? Yes, there's lots of it. What, what are you asking? Is there more information I should know between a router and a switch? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot in there. You know, one of the things I need to warn you guys is that when we see a switch and it's got like 8 or 16 or even 48 ports on it, that doesn't bother us. That's fine. But we're such, most of us, our exposure to routing is on home routers where you just basically have two connections. You've got a, a LAN connection and a WAN connection. Those types of routers, gateway routers, home gateway routers, are not nearly all the power and beauty that routers could be. Uh, we have routers here in Total Seminars. We have multiple routers laying around that have about eight ports on them. And I can connect each one of those to a different port. Uh, so that would definitely be something. Be careful about your own limitations. And use my practice test. Boy, I'll tell you, that's really the, the, the biggest thing. But, yeah. Uh, also remember switches work at layer two of the OSI 7 layer model where routers work at layer three. Johnny Five is alive. Oh, the great Mike Strame, I am here for you, sir. As I search for work while studying for the a exam, I often see Active Directory as a qualification. Should this knowledge I seek immediately, please? <laughs> Johnny Five, the important thing is you get a job, all right? My biggest concern with people, especially when you're starting to look for work, is so many people use achieving certification as an excuse to not get a job, okay? And, uh, and I'm not saying that's you, I don't know you at all, uh, but you always want to be careful. So when I hear something like this, that's my first concern. I could be way off with you, and if I am, I apologize, but I've heard that a lot. Uh, I, I don't think Active Directory is important at all unless you intend to be working as a network administrator for uh, Microsoft Networks. And that would be in the job description for stuff you're looking for. So I would say no. Now, if you, I, I will tell you that Active Directory, Microsoft's Active Directory is fabulous. What an incredible chunk of technology. And uh, I can't recommend you learn enough just because it's cool. But don't use that as an excuse not to get a job. Now, uh, if you're seeing a lot of job offers that uh, ask for that, then, I, then keep looking for more jobs. I can't believe that there'd be entry-level style jobs that would be saying that. But I'm not saying they're not, Johnny Five. Uh, what are my thoughts on right to repair? <laughs> I've been a huge 
fan of iFixit uh, since the, about the day they were conceived. I remember, I actually met the CEO, he's a young guy, nice guy, super motivated tech. Uh, and so yes, I believe that it, it, it makes no sense. I don't care if it's a farm tractor or a Mac, people should have the right to repair things that they've paid for. Now, if you wanna come up with a new kind of licensing where you're not paying for it, maybe a lease or something like that, I could maybe make an argument for it, but it's, it's just a scam to make more profitability without doing anything good. Uh, Trevor Gorham, uh, 239. How should I go about memorizing the 802X standards? And which are the ones worth memorizing? I have slept since the last time I thought about this. Bear with me a minute. I can do this. Ah, Dave. It's... <laughs> Remember that, uh, so we're talking about uh, 802X standards. I'm assuming you're meaning like not 802.11 standards, right? You're talking about true. EAP TLS, EAP TTLS, EAP uh, MD5, and then whatever EAP version uses pure password, it eludes my mind for the moment. Those would probably be the only four you'd have to memorize. And if you're using my books, that's all in there anyway. Man, that was, I had to think about that one for a minute. Zach Morrill, hi guys, sorry I'm, Zach, you missed everything. Uh, taking the 102 in a few days. I'm stuck on the difference between boot rec slash fix versus boot rec slash fix NBR, boot rec slash rebuild BCD. Okay, so those are three very separate pieces and they vary dramatically whether you're talking about uh, old school uh, uh, MFT versus GPT drives. And so boot rec slash fix, is it fix boot? Boot rec slash fix, fix the old school boot record. Boot rec slash MBR fixes the, oh, but here we go. Boot rec slash fix boot fixes the entire boot sector, that the very first boot sector, which is still important because you have to have a jumper to have it go to your GPT partition. Uh, what was the next one? Boot rec slash fix MBR only fixes the master boot record part of that. So if you're having problems with your system finding uh, Windows, then you would run that. And then what was the last one you had? Uh, rebuild uh, boot configuration data. That's surprisingly rarely used. Uh, usually what's gonna happen if you've uh, got a problem with your boot configuration data is that there's something in that boot partition, assuming you have a boot partition, uh, there are ways in, uh, to avoid that, but not so much anymore. There are, uh, let me think about this one more time. This is tricky. Boot rec slash rebuild BCD. You know, I actually, we talked about this, I think it was just last week, and I had all my ducks in a row, and I forgot about, I forget exactly when does one run rebuild BCD. I'm gonna let Dave Rush see if he can help me out here. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, I had to think about that one for a minute, sorry. Zach Morrill, we're not going to next, what if, I'm never going to annex Wales. What would, if I were to annex anywhere in England, where would I annex? Yorkshire, there we go. I love the puddings. Daniel Walkowitz, I just completed the trifecta, I want to say thanks for all the great instruction, you're very welcome. All right, guys, looks like it's slowing down. That's as good. It's uh, 12.45, 2.45 here. So if we have run a couple minutes early, it's never a problem with that. Equally, if sometimes we run a little long, that's no problem with that either. So guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Listen, thank you so much for showing up. Get on the Discord channel. You won't regret it. Uh, 
Bear with me for about 30 more days until I can actually say something that's really cool is going on. I love you guys to death. I really do, okay? Well, not Zach, but the rest of you guys I think are absolutely amazing. Uh, I, I really appreciate, I appreciate it when you guys come on and uh, it's a lot of fun. Andrew Hutz wants to annex Scotland so that we can get to the distilleries. Good thought, Andrew, I like that. Anyway, guys, I'm out of here. Y'all be good now. And I will see you on Wednesday. And until then, this is your Uncle Mike saying good night. Good night. We're off.